Hello everyone and welcome to the 23rd Objective C tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering how we can use selectors in Objective C. So selectors are a great way that we can create a method name or hold a method name more specifically in what's known as a selector. So what this allows us to do is call the selector or method any time that we want within our program. And we can even pass these method names in parameters. So if you wanted to create a method that instead of passing you know, integers or NS strings or whatever in parameters, we could pass in a selector, which would give us the ability to call some method name in our, in our method, which is um, pretty useful. And um, so the difference really between using square brackets, which you know is our standard way of calling methods, and we can just you know say, you know, some string, and we can say, you know, whatever we want to do with a string. So you guys are very familiar with the square bracket way of just calling methods, but selectors are a way that we can store these methods in a selector, and we can call them at a later point in time. So I think the best example of this is uh, when we use NS timers, and I know I haven't covered NS timers, but I'm just going to give you kind of a brief overview of what they do or how they work. So a timer is simply something that repeats itself with a given interval. So for example, for video games, if we wanted to repeat some process or refresh our screen every, let's say, 1 30th of a second, we could put in the 1 30th of a second for our time interval, but then we'd want to call some method every 1 30th of a second. And what we pass in parameters is a selector. So we could pass that selector in and it would be calling, or the NS timer could call that selector every 1 30th of a second, which is extremely useful. So that's really how selectors are useful. They're most useful when we can pass a method name in parameters. So let's just get started with this tutorial, and I'm not going to be creating any methods, but I'm just going to show you how you can create a selector and a few different methods that are associated with selectors. So with that said, let's go ahead. And we're going to say nsMutableArray, and I know that sounded kind of random, we're just going to start making arrays now, but believe me, there's a good use for this. So nsMutableArray, array, and array with objects, and we're just going to say um, this array with object, we're going to have, let's see, Yoda, we're going to have a Jedi in there, let's throw in some dark side power with Darth Vader. And now we have just created our NS mutable array. Simple enough. So now we want to create a selector to see if we can call some method on this array. And um, you know this is quite useful in uh, different things. It's probably not that useful for this example, but this example is really just to show you how we can create a selector and some different things that we can do to check if objects can use those selectors. So how do we create a selector? So all we have to do is use the type SEL, and SEL just means selector, pretty simple. And it just works like any other variable that we'd create, we just create the name. So we just created a selector of, uh, or message selector. Now let's say we want to assign this message selector to some value. So what we do is we'd use the at sign selector directive, which looks like this. It's just an at sign and selector. And selector, all it takes in is some method name, and then we can use that as our selector. So again, what we've done so far is just created uh, our selector with the variable name that we want to store it in, and now we're trying to create a selector by using at sign selector. So what we put in at sign selector is just our method name, which is add object in our case here. So for add object. Uh, all add object does is takes in parameters a new object and it adds it to the end of the array. So we have add object and you'll notice that we include the colon at the end because anytime we have a colon that represents that we have some object that we'd like to put in which is in parameters. So we need to have these colons if we want to represent that we have objects that we pass in. So add object, of course, if we were to write it out, would, ha would take some object value. And when we create our selectors, we have to have this colon to represent that we have some object that we can pass in with this method name. If it didn't take any parameters, then we could just take the colon out, and now it would just be some selector that just said add object. I don't know what it would add, but you, you get the idea. 
We could also have multiple objects as well. And a good example of this would be if we had to do remove object in range. So we could just say uh, remove some object and we remove it in some range. So again, you can see that we have just the name of the method, nothing else. So all we have is remove object, colon, in range, colon. And that just represents that we have two parameters. So that's how you'd write uh, different selectors if you were to create your own selector. And so that's just the example of what we could do if we had multiple parameters in some method. So let's go back to our add object here. And what we have so far is a selector that will be able to hold the method name of add object. So now we can test to see if something will respond to a selector that we send to it. So for example, if we want to send this message to this array to see if it can respond to add object, which essentially means can array use the add object method, and we can do this by using um, responds to selector. So all we say is array responds to selector, and then we can pass in our selector in parameters. So what this is testing for is to see does our array respond to the selector message? So essentially what will happen here is we're seeing if, if we were to call this message or send this message to our array, could it call the add object method? That's really what we're saying here. So this is just going to return a bool value. It's going to check to see, can we respond to this method? So response to selector is just going to return yes or no. If it can respond to it, or in essence, can it add an object in an NS mutable array? If it can, it will return yes, and otherwise it will return no. So now we could just say, well, that's awesome. Now we're just going to say array, add object, and I don't know, we'll just add another string of, let's say, soda. And yes, it rhymes with Yoda, but it has absolutely nothing to do with any of the other values. I don't know why I'm adding it. But anyway, you get the idea. We have array, add object of soda. But we could also use another method which um, allows us to use selectors with it. Because you'll notice here, we're just assuming that we're going to use the add object method. That's what we're assuming that we're going to use. But we can also check, or we can perform selectors on different objects. So let's rewrite this and say, um, let's see if our array, if we can perform this selector on the object. So we, here we're seeing if we can respond to this selector, which means the array can, if we were to send add object to the array, it would work. So that's what response to selector does. And now array perform selector just means we're going to run this method, or we're going to send the message to our array. So we actually want to use a different method here for this. We want to use perform selector with object, which is this method right here. And perform selector with object, you'll see in a bit how this is useful. But uh, again, the selector that we want to use is our message selector. But remember that our add object takes a parameter. So that's what the with object is for right here. The with object means our parameter that we want to pass in when we call this. So with object is simply going to be our soda. So now that's how we can use perform selector. We can say array, we are going to perform the selector message, which is add object, and you're going to perform it with this object soda. And basically what this is equal to is just array add object because that's what our selector is, and our with object is just the value we pass in, which is soda. So this and this are technically equivalent, but the nice thing about perform selector is that we can use the selector that we're testing for above. So we're not just assuming that we're using add object. So that's um, a few various ways that you can use selectors, and again, they're more useful when we have, uh, we're passing them in a method name rather than using them like this in our program. But um, you get the idea. So let's go ahead and NS log this to make sure that we've added our that our selector worked properly. So we're going to see, we're, oops, we're going to pass in our value, or our array, and we're going to just get it to print out the contents of the array. So array will print out whatever it has in it. So let's run through this just one more time. We created just a general NS mutable array, which allows us to add new objects to it. And our selector, which we created below, is just containing the add object message that we could send to our array. Here, we're, we're seeing 
Well, will it respond if we send the message, which is add object, would the array respond to that selector? Would it work if we sent the add object message to that array? And then perform selector is simply running the method for the array. So that's uh, basically what we have so far. Let's go ahead and NS log this to see that it worked. And as you can see, we get Yoda, Jedi, Darth Vader, and Soda. So that's basically what we had uh, working for us, and that's the general idea of how selectors work. So um, just as a side note, uh, if we wanted to create a method name for this, so let's say we want to pass a selector in a method that we were going to create. And believe me, there are times that we'd actually like to do this. Um, if you'd like to test multiple methods or something, you can pass in some selector, and it's actually quite useful. So for this example, we're going to say, uh, th this is just an example of creating a method name. So you do this like in a class, obviously, but this is just where I'm going to show you how to make it. So we'd say void, and we could say, you know, some method. And in parameters, we'd obviously take a selector, which is our, again, our just selector type, which is whatever method that we'd like to pass in. So you can see this is no different than any other method. We are simply passing some value in parameters. And then, of course, this would be some selector. And that would be how we could declare some method name in our um, you know, header file of a class or something. So this is a simple way that you could put in a selector as a parameter. And of course, if you called this, um, this method, you could, of course, pass in this selector. So that's really how selectors work in Objective-C. There's nothing too complicated about them. Um, there's simply a way that you can store methods and you can call those later on uh, whenever you need to in your program. And again, the most useful or the most useful cases for selectors are simply when you pass them in parameters like the NS timer example that I gave you at the beginning. But as you can see, you can test to see if different objects respond to different messages. And that's really how Objective-C shines, is that you can see if you were to send this message to an object, can it respond to that message? And that's the amazing thing about Objective-C, is that they're not, everything that you send to an object is just a message. So you can always check to see if it can respond to that. Whereas in some other languages, you are just running the methods right from the class. So that's the interesting thing about Objective-C. It's very, very um, interesting. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on selectors, and uh, you might find some use later on in later tutorials when you actually work with selectors. But also, if you ever run across any methods that use selectors, then you know uh, what SEL means. And yeah, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and more tutorials are always in production. And a few more Objective-C tutorials are um, coming. I know I haven't been making the Objective-C tutorials of late, but uh, there's tons more to talk about. So I'll uh, get back on creating some more Objective-C ones as well. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. Please subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next tutorial.